Perfect. Thank you. All right. I guess I'll begin. Um, so I begin this presentation with the story behind my title, No Hetero. During my undergraduate career, I was actively involved in LGBTQ studies as well as within the queer community. Having grown up in a fairly conservative town, these spaces allowed me to find the language by which to express the thoughts and feelings that I had. Particularly, our discussions about heteronormativity provided me with a way of understanding that my discomfort with societal norms was valid. The norms associated with heterosexuality were, in actuality, quite odd and in some cases not sensical. It was during one of these conversations with one of my best friends that I first heard them use the phrase no hetero. No hetero was their own play on the phrase no homo, a queer phobic saying used to assert that one's expression of homosociality was not indicative of their homosexuality. Heaven forbid someone could actually be gay. To me, no hetero was more than just a statement that heterosexuality was undesirable to my friend. Rather, it provided a way of disrupting heteronormativity by highlighting the queer phobia embedded in the phrase no homo, while simultaneously valuing rather than othering non-heterosexual identities. In the same way, my research also seeks to queer dominant discourse, bringing narratives that have long been marginalized to the center. I center Polynesian ways of knowing in my presentation in order to call into question the normalization of Western education practices. My hope is to show that alternative ways of learning are equally as valuable and are the means by which new narratives and new ways of educating can emerge. Next slide, please. Um, before I continue, I think it is important to, to acknowledge that we have a diversity problem within archaeology. According to the Chartered Institute of Archaeologists, henceforth CIA, 2012 to 2013 survey of archaeologists in the UK, 99.2% of the 830 archaeologists surveyed identified as white. Similarly, according to the Society for American Archaeology survey, which focused on archaeologists in America, 98% of its members were white, and like those surveyed in the UK, were predominantly middle class of bourgeoisie. Outside of ethnic and socioeconomic status, only 1.8% of those surveyed uh, through the CIA surveys were disabled. In terms of gender and sexuality, while the number of men and women are both equal, about equally represented, studies suggest that gender disparities are still faced within archaeology. Beyond that, little information exists for LGBTQ, gender, queer, trans, and non-binary individuals within that field. While admittedly some of these statistics are a bit dated and there have been more trends towards increasing diversity in higher education, white middle class faculty still make up the majority of these institutions. Uh, next slide. The statistics for Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders in academia and archaeology are even more severe. In terms of primary education, Pacific Islander elementary, middle school, and high school students have one of the highest absentee rates when compared to other ethnic groups. Um, Pacific Islanders typically make up less than 1% of the student body at most universities nationwide, around only 50% of which will graduate. 23.3% of Pacific Islanders hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and these numbers have declined in recent years. These demographics are mirrored at my institution, UCLA, despite there, have, uh, there being a considerable population of Pacific Islanders within the surrounding region. Out of my four years at UCLA, I've only met three other Native Hawaiian graduate students, and I, to my knowledge, am the only Pacific Islander graduate student who, have, who has ever been part of my program. I'm only aware of one other Native Hawaiian student pursuing a PhD while I have been a student here. He graduated during my first year and was the only male Native Hawaiian student in the nation to receive a doctorate that year. While there are some Pacific Islander faculty and staff spread throughout my university, few exist in STEM. Next slide, please. In terms of archaeology, while there are some Hawaiians working in CRM, there are currently only three Native Hawaiian Hawaiian archaeologists holding doctorates, two of which teach in higher education. Similar disparities persist within the National Park Services. Diversity is not an issue that should be taken lightly because it impacts the way we think. When people of similar backgrounds participate in a particular space, it becomes easy to assume that the life experience they share represents those shared by the entire society. Assumptions go unquestioned because it becomes difficult to fathom alternative ways of knowing, and these assumptions are projected onto the path. Identities that are not recognized as normal by Western modernity tend to slip through archaeological investigations. Yet the more the norms of Western modernity become ingrained within archaeology, the harder it becomes to question them. Next slide. Let me present you with an exercise to illustrate my point. Please listen to the following sentence, car sentences carefully. The words oya mean he, she, or it in the Hawaiian language. When these words are used, there is no way to determine the gender of that which is being referred, excepting perhaps through context clues. There is no sentence structure or other sentence construction that can be used to indicate whether oya should be translated to he, she, or it. 
Think about your visceral reaction to this statement. Was your first reaction to find doubt in it? Was it to question my knowledge of the language? I use this example because doubt is the first reaction I receive every time I discuss this aspect of Hawaiian gender. The previous statement is not false. Rather, what this exercise illustrates is the fixation on gender in other languages and how this background becomes applied when learning new languages. Without the incorporation of more diverse identities into our archaeology, we cannot challenge the way that we think or introduce new ways of thinking in the field. My identity and the spaces that allowed me to gain confidence in them are critical to me seeing other ways of being in the past. Is in my, during my introduction to LBG, LGBT student, LGBTQ studies course that I began to hear new narratives. And I want to pause here to point out that a counselor almost dissuaded me from taking it um, because they didn't think I would like it. And that's just another example of heteronormativity in the field uh, in academia. Um, I remember sitting in class during one lecture, listening to all the atrocities faced by LGBTQ people at the hands of the United States and being livid. I was livid not just because of what happened historically, but because I had taken history classes my entire life and every one of them had failed to mention even one thing about this. What or rather who else had I missed? I began to question how gender had been portrayed in Hawaii.